So well, hello folks, I want to call our meeting to order. Neil and um, thanks for being here. Uh, we are coming back to order, but we are now announcing that we're ex exiting executive session. So um, yeah, we did that and we're and we and we have nothing we have nothing to report. But I want to tell you because we, we didn't warn the meeting for six. And I, so I want to, you know, if you're wondering, like, wait, then it will happen. So we had a situation come up today that required that we <coughs> convene for an emergency meeting, which is one of the things that's, you know, one of the tools we don't use it very often, but we did tonight. We met at six o'clock in an emergency meeting. We went into executive session with our public works director and two of our town attorneys uh, at six o'clock um, on an issue related to personnel. So that's why we were in executive session. It tonight happened to be in, in an emergency situation, and then we exited and have nothing to report as I just said. Um, okay, so with that housekeeping and explanation underway, I want to ask if folks are here, if there are any items of, or if any, anyone wants to make public comment for items that are not on the agenda, if, if that's why you're here, will you raise your hand so I can figure out how many people want to speak in public comment and then figure out what time we have available for everybody. So if you're here to speak on items of public, oh, make a public comment for an item not on the agenda, can you let me know? Okay, looks like everyone's here for something that we already have on the agenda. Okay, um, are there any additions and changes to the agenda? Um, or I would like to postpone the consent agenda yeah. to the next meeting. The entire consent agenda. The entire consent agenda. Okay, because, okay. because these minutes aren't ready to say. Yeah, there's, yeah. All of the minutes are posted on the website as draft, yeah. but we haven't had a chance okay. to review them again before we approve them. Before we finalize them. Okay, so we are. So we're ahead of time. We are yeah. ahead of time. The warrants are here somewhere. Right? Yeah, Dave, Rick's got them. Okay. Now, HPC first, but David Sheet says he's coming. Until 7.20. Around, I would say, probably quarter after 7.20. Okay. okay. Neil's here. Uh, Neil, you want to join us to talk about shade tree preservation plan? Sure. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, we met before, had the yeah. hearing, and there are some changes, mostly minor stuff that came out of it, and we've got a new version that the Conservation Commission is happy with. Um, so I think they're just... Did we, get the new, I don't, did we get the new version? I can't. I, I emailed it to you the other day. I can send it along again. Yeah, yeah. And this is, it was in one of those emails in this recent. So oh, okay. can you look, can we just back up and, and yes. review the timeline? So you were here in the spring, and you brought yes. the plan. It was June, maybe. Was it June? And then are you saying that the Conservation Commission took another look at it? Yeah, we made some changes based on that meeting, and I brought it back to the Conservation Commission, and they looked at it and said, okay. great. And now we still have to have a hearing. We have to have, we have, to have a public. We have right. to have a public. The select board has to hold a public hearing. That's right. To adopt the plan. That's right. So I think we just need to schedule a time for the public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That needs to be warned ten days in advance. Has to be. What we hearing. said we would do last time is warn it at six. At a night of one of our regular meetings, does yeah. that still work for you? That's yeah. fine. Who yeah. does the warning? Do you do it or do we do it? I do it. You do it. Okay. okay. Do it. Oh, and so this is a good time for me to say that um, we we uh, warned the town highway seven um, continuance to October tenth instead of a regular meeting. So our regular meeting is October seventeenth. And then, assuming that we get ourselves immediately back on course, then the fourth meeting of October is the week following. I think that's the 24th, right? Um, I think that's the 24th. Yeah, that's right. So the 24th, um, would you want to do it the 24th? That sounds great. At 6 o'clock? How do folks on the board feel about this? That's fine. Any, any, anybody have, 
Is there anything you want to say, and then I'll ask one of these questions? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, John. Uh, Mark, any questions for? No, I don't think so. I'm looking forward to the interview. Okay. Rick, Denise. No. Uh, no. All right. So we will <coughs> 6 p.m. October 24th. And we'll put it on our agenda as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <coughs>
public hearing for revisions. And okay. we'll have if people come at that time and they want to talk about it, we'll we can circle back and revisit this item. But it's okay. so like what it. she said in an email that she sent to all of us and the PC. Um, it's about the zoning regs. And she says the planning commission has had their public hearing and received comments to the proposed regulations. The PC may decide to make changes based on the public comment before sending them to the select board. But they don't have a firm date when those changes might be. They don't have a firm date when those changes might be completed and sent to the select board. Um, maybe sometime in November. What they were doing is they were trying to get it so that we would have our public hearing and accept the changes, and then we could put it on for town mar March meeting. But that vote. ship sailed. But there isn't going to be time, so it'll either have to be a special meeting or it'll have to wait till the next time there's a general election. So, <clears throat> could you help me out? Just I, I ought to know this, but I don't. So, the town plan. Is approved the by zoning the, ordinance, excuse is, me. Is approved by This the is the zoning ordinance, right? right? Amendments to the zoning ordinance. Yep. And those amendments have been the subject of ongoing work at the planning commission, including yep. hearings yep. and comment. And now in light of the comment they got, they're they're looking to make they're some looking changes. To, well that's good. I mean they're responding. So they're gonna make changes. When those changes are baked. And then it us. comes to us. Then it comes to us. Mm -hmm. We have to hold a public hearing. Okay. Duly noted, you know, duly warned. Right. And then if we get public mm -hmm. comment and we think there's changes that we need have to, to send be made, it back to them. We have to send it back. Right. It, that's typical. So it right. always has to originate in its final form from the planning commission. Right. Then it comes to us. So I guess my question is, do we approve it? No. It town. goes to the town. It goes to vote at the right. town meeting. Right. We, okay. approve well, we approve the plan. We approve the plan. The electorate approves the zoning. The zoning. Right. Okay. Right. And the and it, at a town meeting and yeah. what and and right. And if we have you know but not March because there's not time. Right. Because right. you have to have this whole process. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be either a town meeting after March, or. Will will or the following March? Okay. But we want to get, and the co I, I attended the Zoom, the Conservation Commission meeting probably three or four weeks ago, and they had some ideas that they were going to send to the Planning Commission. So they need to consider those. The comments they received at their public meeting, which I was going to go to, and then things went a little crazy. Yeah, I was mm. going to go to. Um, Do we? Um, so just broad strokes thinking about timing. Um, we, we could, so I'm thinking about our budget coming up and probably at the next meeting we need to talk about our budget time, how we want to do budget meeting planning. Yeah. Um, so just folks make a note of that. But we're thinking around budget. We have, if we're not going to, that can be that can be consuming. Mm -hmm. um, this could be a big deal, and it could not be a big deal. Is the hard Which? part the the the, 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 the public hearing? Really I hear a public hearing for the yeah. zoning right. Could, it, I would expect right a turnout. Right, exactly. We usually, usually, unfortunately, what happens, and I know it's frustrating for the planning commission, is people will more likely turn up uh -huh. at our meeting. And make comments and want changes to be made, and I realized that. And they didn't go to the planning. Commission. And they didn't go to the planning commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because you know by the time it gets to us, they're like they're ready to be done because they've mm -hmm. spent months and right. years on this and put um, a lot of thought into and it. put a lot of time and energy and effort. So when people show up here and then we ask them to make changes, it can be a little frustrating for them. So do we? But want, that's the process. So do we want to try to squeeze it? in some time really in the midst of budgeting unless we but you well, said they have some things they have to do right we won't know we don't know we won't know how to what to schedule it until they say okay. here it is all right so it would be premature for us to even yeah. in your opinion yes okay i think we all should right. leave it on you know future agenda items so we don't lose it right um okay 
I'll put it down on the future list, but not on the 17th. I hate this shutter. This is not working for me. No, me either. I can't see. Uh, it's David. Oh, it's David. There you are. Hey, David, we're ready for you. David, we're ready for you. Don't bother to get a chair. All right. That's right. I did bring it. You mean sit in this chair? Yeah, that's yeah, your seat there. there. Same You're same on the hot seat, David. <clears throat> This is what you sent me today. Yes. Correct. Which is the grant agreement. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh, nice. Thank you. Oh, it's really nice. Much better. Now nobody else will come. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Are they still in the works? Is that what's going on? Here? Must be. Yeah, they that are, one has they're, right they're, they've things. got the yeah, distress the have, I think. It's okay. a bit of a distress look on that. Because that's the other thing that I'm paying attention to. Okay. Yes, and we were Great. until a minute ago. Now they're gone. Okay, <laughs> David. So folks, uh, if anyone has an agenda, we can find them. We are circling back, uh, this is David Sheets, to the 720 item on Historic Preservation Commission. Off you go. So, um, the grant agreement. This is uh, the latest certified local government uh, project, CLG. Yeah. Grant, you approved the grant application when it was submitted last December. It was awarded in January, but we have not received the grant agreement form until fairly recently. So here it is at last. I remember That's now when we did that. We, we have we met. They, the, the division is way behind in a lot of grant paperwork. $7,150. Yes. And so this is a smaller grant because this one is about developing a history tour for Calus that takes all of the information that we gained from putting the various villages on the National Register of Historic Places. With each of those, a little history has been developed for all of the five hamlets were in the final stages of completing Maple Corner. And that was the previous year's CLG, and that is still in the works. That's almost wrapping up. Is Adamant done? Adamant is done, yes. So everybody's done except for Maple Corner. Maple Corner will be completed in the next month, I think. And at that time, by the way, the town, when we give them the final paperwork for Maple Corner, then the town will be reimbursed. Right. And I know that you went through this audit that, yeah. Yeah, they asked know, us about that. might have alarmed somebody, but you're always going to be down the grant that can't be reimbursed until the tail end. Right, you don't get reimbursed until after that. That's correct. So there's no reimbursement yet for Maple Corner. That's what's showing on your books. Right. This grant has yet to even incur any expenses. Yet. This grant is yep. for? So this grant is one that actually, unlike our, a number of our grants recently, we're not going to award this to a consultant. That's usually what our grant is paying for the person who's working with us to develop Maple Corner, for example, is the principal um, cost of the grant. This is Tobin Anderson. Some of you may know Tobin. He's on the commission, as is Susanna Blatchley. And the two of them are taking the lead on this latest grant. Mm -hmm to develop a podcast that will be used as an app or um, there will be a printed version, but there will also be this podcast and your ability to drive around Calus mm -hmm. and hear the audio for with music by Susanna in the background. <laughs> <laughs> hear the audio of That's gonna be so cool. yeah, yeah. the history of each and every one of the five hamlets and we're thinking of doing certainly um, historic places 
in the town that aren't necessarily yeah. in the mm -hmm. enclaves. And that will be, um, we're going to do this over a two year period because it's going to be complicated. Those are expenses for it. We're going to bring Erica Heilman in to uh, work with us on nice. this. So Erica will be involved. Cool. Um, they're a little group of people, including Callis Elementary School. So we also <coughs> want to engage the kids. We want to do things with them for a change. This is the fun one. In other words, putting all of the various parts of Callis on the National Register is does not engage the community as much as doing something like this. Yeah, this is fun. So now we take the history we've um, accumulated and written and do something with it, which is exciting. Really so exciting. So it's going to be really fun. That's great. Yeah. Can you great project. David, CLG stands for? Certified Local Government. So Callis is one of the few rural uh, towns in Vermont that has gone through this process. Once you're in your a certified local government, you become eligible for historic preservation funds. These are not federal funds that come to the division for the purpose of promoting historic preservation. And um, the division <laughs> has long insisted that doing the National Register of Districts is the first priority. Um, but once you get past that, then you can start to have projects like this. That are fun. Yeah. That are really more, really more fun and that engage the, the, the town. Do the boring ones first. Um, exactly. Got to do the hard work first and then... You know, the very first grant yeah. that the East Calais store got was this for planning, was mm -hmm. a CLG grant. So we, right. we diverted, uh, the town hall was the other big thing that we right. did mm -hmm. for quite a few grants. Yeah, I remember. To support the town because of the need to address the town hall, then the need to address the, uh, so we've taken a few diversions in the past, but mostly we've been about these National Register of Districts. Right, and, and and to be clear, for instance, it doesn't mean that you, like in East Cal's, for instance, we got the historic register. It doesn't mean that people can't, some people used to think that you couldn't do anything in, you know, on your house or on a building, that you couldn't yeah. make any changes, and that is not the case. That's correct. Listing on the National Register is, has nothing to do with regulatory activity. Right. Regulatory activity is done by the community itself. So the district that is in Kent's Corner that is a design review district was sure. done by an ordinance that was passed by the voters of Calais right. and it roughly follows the boundaries of that National Register right. District. Yeah. And when we started, that was the only National Register District in Calais. Um, today, now we have five. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. which is exciting, which is more than probably any town in Vermont, I'm going to guess, simply because of our decentralized. Right, not only is Hamlets. Yeah, this yeah. is a town of Hamlets rather than one that has a major uh, village or village center. So it, it's a little different. Most of the CLGs are places a much greater population, like Montpelier. Um, they're downtown, so it's, it dovetails with the downtown programs in many of these communities. So Callis is a little different in that we, uh, we're, we're rural and we're all volunteers. Right. Because most of these are CLGs are run by the professional staff of a city like Montpelier, the planning, Department, for example, right. somebody yeah. like yeah. that. So. Is, help me out, in terms of the work that we did previously on any one of the hamlets, 
Is there, is there ever going to be a physical manifestation of that work, like plaques or with QR codes or anything like that? That's exactly what this tour may do. It's actually. have plaques with QR yeah. codes, yeah. This yeah. would help people go right into. We're also. I didn't used to know what a QR code was. I'm right. Sure. But I did. You did it. You, you did. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, we'll be using technology stuff that I'm sure I don't understand myself. Um, but hopefully some of the others do. So, okay. so we just need a signature on the grant uh, agreement, and um, that'll, uh, then we'll start to develop this project. Is there the, a the East Callus, yeah, I saw in the email about the East Callus store project. Right, there's the $5,000 one. That's been going, I started working on that when Wendy, who's never, brought right. it to my attention, and Anyway, we got it sorted. We got, we got it figured out. That's figured out. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for. That's all I care about. Yeah. So, is there a motion to approve and sign the grant paperwork so that David has signed? Good. Motion by Mark. Second by Rick. Can you? Yeah. All in favor? Any other discussion? Questions? All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Jesus. Aye. Great. Like that. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you David. Thank you. It sounded like a great tour. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to the HPC. Should be fun. Uh, okay. Looks like somebody just came in. Is he coming tonight? I don't think so. Okay. Right. Um, is Jason Carmichael here? He said he got. He said he got the email with the. What time is it? He got the. Yeah. He said he got the email. I prepared the curb cut out. No, I'm talking to, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm talking to Eric. Okay, all right now. All, all right. right. Okay. I, let the minutes reflect that I'm recusing myself, please. Oh, you're recusing yourself for the... CKC. CKC. Um, so, but just to clarify, yep. what's our disposition with Jason? Are we going to postpone it until he's here, or what are we going to do? Uh, well, we'll decide that when we see if he even shows up. Yeah. Okay. He may show up. We're, we're running a little ahead of schedule. So. Okay. Um, and, okay, sorry. I'm gonna move these. These are distracting me. Okay. Hi, Chris. Hey. Thanks for joining us. So you uh, submitted an application for a curb cut on uh, Blissero. Uh, no, I'm on the wrong one. Yes. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. All right. Why don't you tell us about your project? And I see that you met with Alfred. Yes. So we've had <clears throat> we had uh, our project was reviewed by the DRB uh, back in May and June, April and May, I guess. And we got our decision, preliminary decision, uh, on in June, June 12th. And one of the uh, items that we needed to follow through on as a condition of that DRB preliminary decision was the curb cut. Um, so we had initially had uh, Alfred out to the site last year, and then following um, the 
DRP decision, we asked them to come out again and take another look at it. Okay. Um, and so the you met with Alfred about the specific curb cut location. Correct. Yeah. Rick, have you had a chance to take a look at this? Um, Chris, you note that the site distance is 345 feet and 600 feet in, that's in one direction and then the other? Correct. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. And also your application notes, this is helpful, the curb cut design and construction are according to standard um, AOT B71B, except it will be a gravel surface not paved. And Rick, I'm going to wait for you to speak to that curb cut standard, which sounds like it is co entirely consistent with our curb cut mm -hmm. ordinance. Yeah, and I can just add that when we went through the DRB process, that was sort of one of our questions was, there are two subsections of the B71 standard, one A and one B. And mm -hmm. right. We thought we would fall into B and, and that was the finding of that's why that, that would definitely be compliant with our standard, and that, that's what we would be so mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Rick, are you going to have... Just looking at it, I'm Yeah, sorry. let's just let Rick ha have a second to absorb it. No, others just, want to testify. Hmm? If others want to testify. Well, I think that what Rick has to say once he's, he's taken a look at it may be the useful backdrop. This looks good to me. I mean, on the three, the, the, the sight lines are 345 and 600. So Alfred was out there twice, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he can just rely on you. Uh, yeah. He confirmed right. that correctly. Yeah. Right. What was measured out here. I got a you know a verbal okay from Alfie before I submitted this. Yeah, and he did yeah. yes. um, Alfred yeah. did say at our last meeting it wasn't here or you weren't here, but he said that, that was that was all set. I don't want to put words in his mouth when he's not here, but I do remember him saying that. Um, Rick, are you prepared? No, I'm, I'm good with this. Are you prepared to say that it's consistent with the town's yeah, ordinance yeah, for curb cuts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there somebody from anybody else on the board have a question or a comment before there was a hand raised in, in our in our audience? Okay. Um, Mary. Um, it's Mary Van Vechten. Um We would just like to request a site visit of the select board to review. <coughs> and look over the curb cut before a decision is made. So Mary, can you say, can you say more on, because on, on what basis? Because the questions that I'm asking are, is it consistent with our curb cut ordinance? And so, so if it's, so is there a concern that it's not consistent with the curb cut ordinance? Um, Yes, and there's a concern that um, there's another area that may be requested of curb cuts. I know th this is for this particular curb cut, but I just think it's important for the select board to take a look at it. I don't know um, if any of them have. So I just want to, so we, we our, our review is pretty limited in terms of curb cuts. We look at site distance primarily. Okay. And that, that the approach when it reaches the town road is a level approach. Um, if there's a future in curb cut that you folks are concerned may be in future plans, I'm aware of the concern around this property. Yeah. That is not what's under review tonight. And okay. that would be reviewed in isolation. And when we get an application, and we would, again, review it against the standards. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, sure. And, well, 
Peter also wrote a little bit about the, the can, I'm sorry, book. can you say your name, oh, sir? Terry Van I'm uh, married. You're with her? Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's a visual problem here coming over a hill, going down, and it's obviously the only place they can put a driveway. But it's a visual problem where it is. You know, you're coming down over a hill and it's right there. And I don't know if you can see that on the screen. The only one there, the question is how many, I mean, according to this, we got, uh, what, 345? Hang, hang on, Rick. I'm sorry. I'm just going to rip. Alfred, delighted you're here. We're on the, um, the CKC Holdings curb cut. You want to come and maybe join us? Sorry, we were running super ahead of schedule. <laughs> I got to step back. Um, so, yeah, so to recap, Chris is presenting on the application. We asked him to confirm site distances. Rick is looking at the, the I think you're looking, Rick, Wally, you guys speak for yourselves. You can speak for yourself at what you're looking at. Um, Alfred, the CKC application for curb pump permit, you've been out there a couple times. Yes. Um, and what do you have to say? There's, yeah, I'll let you speak. There's plenty of site distance, um, and they plan on putting a call for it. Mm -hmm. They've had an engineer looking at it quite extensively. I don't see any problem with it. Yeah, they marked 345 to 600 foot. Yeah. So that you should be plenty there. It's a B seventy one standard yeah. shape and drainage and size radius. When I first looked at it, it was climbed the hill a bit, and then they decided to move down, which yeah. only made it better yeah. for the site distance. So I see no problem with it. Um, John, did I interrupt you when Alfred came in? No, I didn't. So. The location that Alfred spoke to, the relocation, that's what's spoken to in the application here. Correct. Yeah, that okay. would reflect the way this Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, he was one of our, he was in the middle of that. It, okay. Well, let's go back to Chris to finish. And then Mary, I saw your hand. Denise, I saw your hand before. So we'll, we'll go back to the folks in the audience. Go ahead, Chris. I don't have anything further. Okay. Mary? I just, so this is just for the curb cut for the driveway. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So is that moved from the original curb cut? I think, where the original curb cut would want to be. The logging road access, I think they No, that's that. a different place. Oh. Like, where they're going to have the driveway, uh, he just said they moved the, where it hits the road, the main road. What I heard, what I heard, is that they've moved the proposed curb cut from the original proposed spot to a new proposed spot. Does that respond so to your question? Nobody knows where that is. I mean, so far they move it because it's a smart, so it should be flooded. Another it's survey, yeah. No, There's it's the, the existing layout. Basically, we did when we first started talking to the surveyor. We had an idea of the driveway center line and. Once we had the detailed grades, existing topography, it was going to be hard to make it compliant with the B71B because it was basically entering a little bit too far up Bain Camoli Road, and therefore it was too sharp of a transition as you started off the road and down onto the driveway. So we moved it downhill on Bain Camoli Road a little bit, uh, which helps with the grade of the driveway itself and increase the site distance on that uphill side. Because <clears throat> doesn't that interfere with the old wetland? Uh, no. Okay. So it's not the old snowmobile trail. It's more toward... It's very, it's very close to where we basically did the site walk uh, this spring. Very close. And so it's actually further towards Baines? Correct. Yeah. Okay. By right. 20 yeah. feet or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Denise, do you want to ask a question or make a comment? Yeah, I just wondered, if, is there an existing curb cut there already on um, where the log landing was? I don't know. I'm not, that, not that I'm aware of. I, I don't know either. There's already places where you can drive into this log landing. There's two places. 
But that looked like footprints. Right. As far as I know, I discussed that with Neil Maker, who's been the consulting forester on that yeah. parcel for a while. He's not aware of any curb cuts permits there. I'm not aware of any curb cut yeah. permits there. It hasn't been logged since we've owned it. Um, so. Okay. And there was a hand in the back. Can you, uh, can, yeah. you can you stand up and introduce sure. yourself, please? Yep. Yeah. My name is uh, Edward McKees. I'm also one of the property owners part of uh, CKC. So I was just going to add. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Keith. Keith. Jordan Keys. Keys. Um, one of the other reasons that we uh, scooched the driveway down, technical term, scooched, uh, mm -hmm. I think, for <laughs> survey, uh, was uh, under that regulation, we also uh, wanted to uh, achieve the radiuses in and out um, so that we were coming in at perpendicular, mm -hmm. uh, which we wouldn't have been able to do if it were you know, 10 feet up where we had originally wanted it. So or we're proposing it. Um, so after consulting with the surveyors and the engineers, we moved it down to get those radius as well. So now we are coming in at a more appropriate level and then also uh, more desirable radius to the, the center line of the road. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other questions from the board? Any? I, I guess. I um, so, I, I just want to reflect back to what I'm hearing, I'm hearing There was a concern expressed in the audience that the curb cut might not have ideal sight lines because of the crest in the road. Am I understanding that you had some of that concern and you moved it? In part because of that or just moved it for other reasons? It was moved for other reasons. And and the Alfred the crest of the road would have been part of what you're examining when you're looking at sight distance. Absolutely. Yeah. It's measured from a distance of right. three feet high, over you know if you've got a brow, mm -hmm. it's basically driver eye level to the crest. It's not generally good to have a drive near a crest, even though you've got a sight line. It's distracting. You're only getting a partial car. Somebody coming over has a longer reaction time. No, to see a vehicle. So this is how far from the crest of the It's a pretty high crest that, where you can't see that on your screen. Mm -hmm. right. The but sight distance in one direction is 345, <clears throat> the other is 600. Is that is the crest of 345 or 600? That's the uphill side. The, the 345 is the crest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We require 300 feet of sight yeah. distance. And so at, at 35 miles an hour, that's plenty of distance. That makes sense. I guess my other question, my other question, I guess of the board, do I understand correctly that our discretion here, this is like a building permit. I mean, it's a, it's a check the box. We don't have discretion to say, oh, well, we don't like it generally. We have to, we have, we have to ask the question of whether it meets the 300 foot line of sight mm -hmm. period. It, we have a we have a we have an ordinance that incorporates the standards that, that the folks are talking about. We ask Alfred, and it, it's not just line of sight. I mean, line of sight is influenced by I don't know. Other times there's been concerns. Cold about, yeah, yeah, there's other there's other there's other space, where, spring flow, or whatever. right? Yeah, yeah. seventy one lays all that out. Yes, and, and so it's a series of requirements. It is. Right. That's right. Yes, that's right. That's They're right. all safety requirements. And, right. Yeah. Okay. And functional. Run off water advantage. Right, and if it checks those boxes, then we are obligated to approve it, right? It's yeah. not, it's not, that's the, that is the universe right. of, our, of right. our discretion. Exactly. Yeah, we generally can't. But and sometimes condition perfect. based on unique circumstances where it fits, but there are other concerns that are related to like water flow generally and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or proximity to a wetland, we might say, you need to ensure that there's state hay bales or something to right. like stabilize stuff right. like that. But okay. or, you know, pretty limited. Check dam or something to raise a sediment. Right, right. Okay, so and Alfred, you've been out there a couple of times, and yes. and you're you're essentially. I'm very comfortable with the location. <laughs> 
So I move that we approve the application as presented tonight. Second. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, in typical fashion, I wrote on my version. Um, but thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, for thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for those of you who <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Uh, I need to remember not to write on these things. Uh, okay. Um, and Jason Carmichael has not joined us, am I right? I don't see him. Okay. Um, Are we okay. going to do that one anyways? Uh, we so could, yeah. Alfred's, Alfred's, here. Alfred's here. Alfred, we, we put aside the Jason Carmichael. Have a seat. Are you comfortable there? <laughs> Uh, okay, so we also have the Jason Carmichael um, Bliss Road curb cut application. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, one? so this one's a little bit confusing because it's it's a little different. It's we just we already approved one curb cut for him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. further up the road near the property line, and now it seems like he's asking for another one down closer to what used to be. Uh, The, the next property down, and it's unclear as to where exactly they want. Yeah, it says 1,700 feet north of the intersection with Blatchley Road. Where is the other one? Right. Is it on Blatchley Road? The, no, no, it's not on Blatchley Road. It's on Bliss Road. Both of them are on Bliss Road. Hmm. So it's. Um, hmm. But I don't, I don't know if they're planning on building another house or another property. Another. You've seen this, have you? I don't know what I have because um, that stretch of time where my trailer wasn't working was when this came in. Oh, okay. Actually, Ruth's got it called up and called it. Uh, yeah, but if Alfred hasn't been out there. If Alfred's unsure and. Yeah. Well, yeah pretty, I mean, the site distance, it's a long stretch, so I think the site distance will be fine. I just haven't really seen the photography of the land to see the water. So, but here's, here's the other thing, though, based on what you just said, can I finish? Is um, if there's another one we've already approved, and have they started construction on that? Like, how do these two well, fit the, together? The original one is all installed. Okay. I've signed off on it. It's done appropriately. It's, it's fine. Okay, so that one was installed. So now they're asking for yet another one. Right. Typically, we don't. Typically, we've made it a practice. You know, if you've got one curb cut, you know, one one per customer kind of thing. So I don't know why they are asking for another one unless they're subdividing. And we don't know. Well, I think they they should subdivide if they're going to do that. They should right. they should have two separate lots. Uh, right, but that's what we don't know. Two right? Yeah. Lots, but it doesn't appear as though they're subdividing. Right, and he, and he doesn't say in his application. He doesn't say. Um, so, it would be great if he could come. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. we want to so table, ask that we table, this. table for more information. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. That makes sense. Um, and will somebody. I'll reach out to Jason. I was going to say, somebody yeah. circle back to Jason and say, um, we, we got a bunch of questions. Need, need more info. Yeah. So, we need, him, need more info and we need him to come in person for right. the meeting, right? Would we, by the way, just for my education on history here, sort of this idea of one per lot, would we insist that the subdivision be underway before we grant the curb cut, or would, you know, is there a... No, no I mean, for instance, CKC, they're not d doing anything yet, but we granted... Okay. We have an application in play, though. You can have, yeah, I mean, if they're, they can submit a curb cut application anytime they want. I think right. somebody yeah, wants to answer my question. Well, yeah. So uh, we've actually decided, I think we've decided a table. We're table. Right. Table right. Right. Item. Right. Yeah. Can I just add a kind of point of clarification or recommendations to the board? You can um, add a point of clarification, sure. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the ordinance uh, says uh, pretty clearly that 
curb path access needs to be approved for any kind of access at any point to a parcel. And it doesn't reference how many how many should be assigned to it. It has to do with access to the parcel in a safe manner. So mm. whether it's for logging or agricultural or driveway access, you know, historically the one that is regulated the most considerably is, is the one relative to development activity and uh, and the installation of the driveway. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but our ordinance in Calus says even temporary access should be temporarily approved or granted. So I would recommend taking a look at that and taking that into consideration, I guess. Um, then, generally speaking, I'm going to address that a little bit. The rules of access management prevent I mean, it would not be in line with that around because that ends up causing problems down the road if there's more development mm -hmm. along that's that, definitely I, I, I'm hey not guys. necessarily passing a judgment there's definitely right. some conflict I think there it would be worth yes. visiting that yeah person. guys this is yeah we've tabled this item I'm glad thank you uh, I'm Mr. Keys, and I Jason, forgot. Uh, Jason. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, uh, come back when this item is on again. Um, okay, so <laughs> yeah, you have, you have or good, not. Good, good or not? Yeah, make your make your decision. I lost. So, do, now for next, so is that is that curve cut sign? The I mean, one. You guys take a picture with your phone. And you the CKC right? one. Yeah. Um, I passed it around. Who has it? Rick. Rick. So okay. I gave it to Rick. This is Jason Carmichael. I gave it to it. I gave you a curb cut. Oh, I have the signed one, but it doesn't have any conditions or anything on it. It's the application as approved as presented. I know, but I, I had the application, but now it's gone. That's I think I gave it to Sharon because the application is spe specified. You gave me that one page. That's all I had. That's all there was. Oh, here, here's the whole. Yeah. The other piece that's of it. Okay. Um, so what do you want them to do? Do you guys well, want to be able to take You guys can take a picture of it before you go, so you have a copy if you want, or you can wait till it comes in the mail. Okay. Whatever you want to do. Sure. Sure what? I love, look. There was an either or. Okay. It wasn't a yes. It's not. Okay. If you want to take a scan. So the, you can, so the conditions are as defined in the application. You want me to add that, Denise? Um, okay. So... All right, so we've tabled the Jason Carmichael. We've approved the CKC as presented. Um, okay, road and bridge standards. This is this is just a quick item. We are not intending, did not in any way intend a deep dive on this at all tonight. Um, we've been there's we've you know there's this is we've had a couple of phone calls. Um, I think probably each of us has heard from a couple of folks, and we wanted to just. Um, for people who, who are unaware, we wanted to just say that the Callus Road and Bridge Standards were developed uh, in over a period, uh, I wasn't on the board at the time, but from what, I, what I've what i learned and was able to see in the record, over a period of, of a, what, maybe a year and a half, for those of you who were around then, and then approved actually in 2014 by the select board. Um, and the select board at that time was John and Denise were on, Toby Talbot was on, Rose Pelchuk, and Scott Bassage? Yeah, Scott Bassage. Scott Bassage. Um, and the committee, it was, a town, it was not, not developed by the select board, it was actually developed by over a year and a half, people came and went from the group, but um, J.C. Meyer chaired at one point, Stephanie Kaplan, I think, was chair at one point, Peter Harvey, Doug Lilly, Craig Lyon, Barbara Whedon, Gary Schultz, Gary Schultz um, Conrad Smith, who is no longer with us, but that group worked really hard to, and I've heard there were records of you being at, at, at meetings. Um, and Toby was at meetings. And Toby was at meetings. Anyway, so, so, the Callus Road and Bridge Standards are not something new, is really what I wanted to say. It's not something new that's recently come up. They were approved in 2014, re-adopted re in or up, uh, updated slightly in 2015 and uh, endorsed again. And they've been on the Callus website since, since, since then, since, since 2015. Um, 
and we've talked about them here, you know, frequently over over the years. So I just wanted to say that much, so that people people have that information. That it's not it's not something new. And Denise is working with Stephanie and others to kind of pull together a more detailed timeline. Yeah. And we'll you know bring that up at a at a different Future time. Meeting. But so the point really was just that it's it's not new. It's not something new that the the, the select board just. You know, whipped up last well, last week or last month. Right. No, well, yeah, it was readopted. It was oh, sure, it was readopted, but it, but it, it was wasn't new. it was nothing new. We made zero changes. It was the same. It was just consistently trying to. We are required, are we not, to adopt the standards well, annually? No, 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 no. There's no. nothing in there that says no. that. It, it had just been a while since the board had clarified mm -hmm. clarified it and. Wanted to put it back out there that these are the road standards as adopted. Right, and when we don't adhere to them, we that's you know we hear complaints about that. So it seemed useful to just clarify that these are the Callis Road and Bridge standards. So and we had we had we have to adopt a standard by the state law. Right? You do have to adopt a standard, whether it's the state standard or then you can vary off from that. Right. Which so right. you do have to have a standard. You do right. have to and adopt that's a standard. happened two years or happened twenty. That's what happened. We adopted. Right. It. Well, let me further clarify. Alfred's correct. We have to adopt one of these standards if we want to qualify for the added ten percent grant benefit. That's right. That's we get a ninety percent state match on our road projects if we had adopted standards that are that comport with. Stormwater control requirements and add a set of requirements to deal with runoff, problem runoff that pollutes our waterways, etc. So, um, and you know, uh, there are towns that didn't, and they're only eligible for 80% match, or depending on maybe it's 70 in some circumstances. But if you want to get that higher level of reimbursement, you need to operate at this higher level of. I guess environmental protection and new roads program. So we designed or developed a subcommittee of the select board, a committee appointed the select board, recommended these and we had hearings and meetings on it and we adopted them. Um, and the state, by the way, approved them as well um, as comporting, as, an, as a, an alternative that meets their expectations. So that was the that was the point of the agenda item right. tonight. Is just I don't think we want to get in, we're not getting into any further discussion. Well, I want to, can I add one thing? As far as the state approving it, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that has changed since the state may have looked at our standard. What in terms of the state well, standards? Yeah, in, in in terms of the grants, the the. The new standard we have to follow for the Lake Champlain cleanup. Mm -hmm. That's totally different now. All the grants, all the Better Back Road grants, mm -hmm. you have to follow their, their standard. So it may so be. I think that you're, if you want to have your standard, you got to get them to look at it or else you're going to lose all that grant money. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that, good. That, that may be. That's, that's the input we're looking for, and it's yep. good input. And yes. We're going to revisit this based on your recommendations and. You know, we're, we're going to look for input from the road crew and mm -hmm. and, yeah. and folks. You know, this should be an evolving conversation. Right. Alfred's and implemented them to the best of his ability, and he's told us numerous times that they don't work fully. And so we're trying to figure out where there are impediments and where they continue to work. So that's well, yeah, we're open to our goal. We're open long, to so. hearing what works and what doesn't work from right. the. Right. Crew and yeah. mm -hmm. others. So we can make appropriate adaptation. Not so that it's it's not a matter of well they don't work so we throw them out with right. the Well they're in force and effect to make changes. That's right. And the right. state hasn't sent us a letter saying they're not, but we should take Alfred's concerns into consideration if they we bump up against our grants, then right. we need to resolve those conflicts. And the state is aware of these standards because they approve them. So they, have them, so they have them on there. Theoretically. But we should make, I'm sure there's been personnel. There's been personnel. Is there a letter that says the state has approved that? Yes, yes, we have that. Okay. Yep. I'd, be, I'd be delighted to see that. Sure, I'll yeah. make sure you get a copy. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, I think, I think we're done. That's what we needed to yeah. say, is just to, you know, I wasn't on the board then, so okay. I've learned some things. 
Um, group payment. Group payment. Uh, are, are we done with that? I couldn't remember. No. Which one? The group group, yeah. group pavement. Yeah, we have to. We're still. Group pavement. pavement. Groovy. <laughs> I think that they used that term since Groovy. the sixties, right? Well, it's more out there. It's just because it's just you're old, John. It's actually more like a rumble strip. Uh, it's I'm thirty-nine. The whole thing for the audience. Just it's like Jack Benny. Right. Group pavement. Group pavement is actually very loose. Group pavement is uh, along the white lines. We're just off of the white line on a road, or once you come on the center line where they cut hollow, so if you drive off of the right way, it brings you, if you drive into the shoulder on the end, that's where the pavement piece would be so more it's not, So it's, it's not like the pavement where they say motorcycles use caution? It is. It is. Oh, it there is. Are okay. eight, well, these are narrow, but these are as perpendicular grooves in the road. Just, they're not very deep and they're not very wide, but when it tires, it just makes a boom, 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 boom. It's like you would see coming up to an can old you, traffic. Can you step yeah. back for a minute and just sort of set the table here? Yeah. We discussed in an earlier meeting. We approved. We, we approved. approved. Right, speed bumps. Hey, the speed use bump. of speed bumps right. as you a missed, way of traffic I think you missed the where we bumps. passed that. Yeah. But we haven't formalized that, which is why right. we keep carrying it forward. And so we, we want to make sure, yes, because we approved that. People were here. Right. They advocated for it. We approved, approved it at the town's expense. So we want to make sure we're, we're really clear when we say, hang on, uh, Rick and Alfred have a better proposal. Um, yeah, a different proposal. A different proposal. Right. Because there was some concern expressed about the speed bumps. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So... So, Rick, and maybe, and Alfred, is this, when, we, when it first came up, we said, we, I think we all agreed, we wanted to take a formal action to endorse speed bumps, uh, or endorse, we did do that, <laughs> endorse the groove payment as an alternative, mm -hmm. and you guys wanted to kind of crystallize a proposal, maybe attach a cost and a timeline to it? I'm so trying to do that. I found okay. a federal highways guideline, which is pretty extensive on how you use these and where you use them. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to digest that to see how we can use that on this road. Mm -hmm. be, and the reason we want to, I mean, we take this kind of time to do this is that by putting out the speed bump on a road where you have vehicles driving at 50 plus miles an hour, you hit a speed bump at that speed. That is extremely dangerous. This is 25 zone. If it is, they're not driving that fast. This is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the problem. That's, that's the problem. You know, the 80 yeah. percent yeah. yeah. tire yeah. will be yeah. that long there. It's in the 50s. So, 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 maybe, so maybe part yeah. of what we need to do is, I just feel like we created an obligation, right? We're like, trying. And, and so maybe... Um, this doesn't throw by going, if we next agree to this, you know, this basically a rumble strip pattern work, it creates a safe version of that. It vibrates a car, but it doesn't throw it out of control. You know, you would, it would be just like, a, you've all driven on them. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and they slow so, down. So groove pavement, in my experience, mm -hmm. stop me, this is wrong. If you want to slow traffic down, you have it grooved, you have a groove strip, maybe this wide, and then you have a second group strip. Wider. And then you have a set another one. Because otherwise you're over it and you're like, what was that? And you're still going 50. Right. But if you keep doing it, and maybe you have a sign, groove pavement, right? Motorcycles beware. Um, and all, and, but you have a series of them, two or three. Well, you do it usually two or three to start, and then it'll be five or six, and then nine or ten. No, so I mean, but I group it, two or three groupings. Yeah, groupings. that's right. Three groupings, probably. Yeah, okay. That's what yeah, we're trying okay. to I'm trying to figure out what is appropriate for this kind of yeah. road. That's okay. okay. And so, I, this so, is, so, okay, so going back, so now we're, we're heading into October. Mm -hmm. Is there any, what would be the time, what do you think is the timeline for when we would? We could do it at any time We could do it any time of year. Yeah, you could do it any time of year. Backing up, is, is this something is this something that we are ready to approve tonight, or are you saying you still want to look into it? I'm still trying to find out the spacing on these. Okay, okay. These do we need state. to know the spacing to, in order to approve the use of this? No, I think we should approve the program tonight. Well, but, okay. Well, that, okay, yes, get it rolling, but 
When we approve, uh, yes, I'm going to keep going back to the speed bumps. We approved speed bumps. And we did that partly because it was fairly immediate. And, yeah. pe and people have an expectation that we've approved that and it's, we're going to be implementing it. And we're not doing that. So, okay. so, so we should, if we are not going to because of speed concerns, then maybe we need, or because of the safety concerns that you raised, then maybe what we need to do on our next agenda is formally um, act to rescind that because of yeah, safety so we, concerns. We should, for the, for the record, keep the minutes and so people know we're rescinding the speed bumps, but we're going to do this, well. this instead because we feel like this is a better and simultaneously, we're adding, and safer. we're adding, as soon as we receive our speed control, mm -hmm. our radar signs, we're going to be adding right. one up that we'll be working in conjunction with it. So mm -hmm. this is a safer version that lets us incrementally go up, you know, to avoid us. Well, I guess I'm asking both you guys, are you asking for action tonight? We can. We could approve it. Well, to I don't want to approve it until we have a sense okay. of, of when it's going to happen. And we should rescind and approve right. yeah, at yeah. the same time. Right. So I think we just keep this on Yeah, here. I just don't, we should rescind, but I don't want to just, I don't want to approve and then it, have, and then it just, just, just kind of sits okay. out there and we don't have some right. focus okay. on so it. Can we, so the idea that we put this on the next agenda for action, well, do you we, feel comfortable that you'll be ready? Well, so on the next, I will try. I, I took long just to find this thing. So we have, um, so I do think we should rescind so that we have a clear record that we're not doing speed bumps. and Which we can do at the same time. We could do at the same time, but we'll just keep, you know, putting the group payment on the, uh, we just need to keep a spotlight on it because, yes. yeah. Because people, people look at the agenda, you know, online, they might not show up. But then they might look at the minutes, so we just need to keep it in the forefront that yes, we approved the speed bumps. We found a better alternative that we feel is safer. It's taking a while to get the information we need to be ready to approve them, and that'll be in the minutes. For improve them when they're actually ready to take steps right. forward and actually do it. So you're feeling like instead of doing it tonight when they're not quite ready with the details. You right. prefer it that, that all the details be there yes. and then we approve it and we know it's going to happen. We know it's right. going to happen. Right. Yeah, and, we and, didn't, and then we rescind at the same yeah. time. Okay. And we didn't warn rescinding, so okay. mm -hmm. we don't want to do that either. Um, okay, so moving on. Bike science proposal. Are we also in holding on that, Rick? No, we've got there. I found the MUTCD actually has a standard for the, uh, it basically is a, uh, bicycles may use full length. There's a sign for that, and it's it's the R4-11. Awesome, so that so one, we that, actually that can, photo we got from one of our neighbors, we can actually gonna, do that? Yeah, it's awesome. to be that it's Stratford. Yeah, yeah, it's in the MUTCD. Wow, cool. Yeah. So, so how okay. many of them do we want to get? Where, well, I guess the question is, where would they go? And then that will determine how many they get. County roads? Really oh. But are these only for paved roads, Rick? Are they well, you can put it wherever you want to. There isn't that. That's the thing. We can do it. Delineate where is, where is their biggest problem. And signs are cheap, right? Well, well not good. You can put them at the entry to our town, too. I mean, usually you have, like, ordinance in place, speed ordinance in place. And at either end of county schools. Right? Yeah. Share the road. But there's a, can do that. there's a specific sign that one we've all seen. Bike, bikers may use the entire lane or something. Like yeah, there, right? I need a guy can show right here. I've got it right. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's not there. It's, just mid, you know, it's essentially a bicycle emblem, and it says may use full lane. That is the, that's the R411. So is your proposal, Rick, that we put that sign up near the entry to the town? Sure, I would I would probably do it. I mean for sure on the major route like County Road. County Road people, 14. North and no, South. we can't put them on 14. Can't can't put on state I mean County Road. Right. No, but Mark's asking about 14. Yes. I mean, we can't. No, we have to have road. them put that They would have to put them up, right? Yeah. But yeah. we've got then we we could have 
I don't know. Let's see. What else would we might like we want to put there? Entrance like, to the, every right town. The every town entrance. Yeah. We can yeah. put them on the entrance to the road that goes to the school mm -hmm. um, off of 14, mm -hmm. as long as it's on the town's portion of that road. Lightning Ridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that would Lightning Ridge would be definitely a good one because it's a common. Probably the Adamant, uh, Adamant Road, all of Martin yeah. Road because bicyclists move through there all the time. Anything around the pond, mm -hmm. the, the, half of that's East Callis. So, uh, I mean, so we would. Uh, I think Adamant Road is a good. Let so let so now we're just brainstorming. I yeah. I'm going to turn to Alfred and then I'm going to ask if the board wants to approve a number tonight. Number for per a number of signs for purchase without micro getting too into the weeds of where they go. Or do you want to push this off to another item? No, another think, night. Hang on, Alfred. Can, Alfred had his hand I up. I think we can. You do it if we if we know how much they are. Alfred. So two things. One thing I'm looking at the the picture of the sign that we're just proposing. It says may use full lane. Mm -hmm. Right. So dirt roads don't. There's no determination of one lane or the other. Right. So I think that holds you to a lane road, which is blacktop, labeled by yellow, white line. Well, it's assumed, there's, there's an assumption that drivers know what there's a right and a left lane. Otherwise, people would be right. driving both sides. So, um, on the back. Uh, I hear what you're saying. So, the other question, the other concern that I have, if you're talking about putting these signs on every entrance of our town, it's a lot of money. Your budget is not going to handle it. Do you know how much they are? I don't know about the particular sign. Most signs are, are seventy dollars for a sign that size, depending on what it says. And but then you've got the post, you've got the anchor, mm -hmm. you've got the manpower to put them in. Mm -hmm. so I just want what's, what's to be aware of the cost before you decide to go covering the whole town with these signs, because mm -hmm. we can't keep up with our own regulatory signs. Maybe it's a. Well, well, why don't we just start out with a couple? Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe we start on county road. Start on county road. Probably. Yeah, that's, okay. that's where the concern is. They're going 50. I mean, people. It's a good. It's a good start. It's yeah. a, what do you do? You do. You do a one on each end of county road. Coming yeah, into right. yeah, and then exiting Well, it's kind of well, limited to the blacktop roads. But I would also suggest on. Well, there's a lot. The problem is there's a lot of coming and going on on County Road. A lot of roads in, on and off. Templeton. Right. And, and wait, Templeton's at East Clear, though. Yeah. Templeton is right. Okay, so road. so our part of County Road, how many? At how many? I don't think we can. That would be two. That would be the beginning, coming out of Maple Corner, Martin Road, then the road that goes to the co-op. Oh, and then there's and then there's that and there's that. And there's that um, Fitch Road on the right on the county road. That's, that's very little traffic. A lot of yeah. So what if we start with half? It is what yeah. half of the main entrance. Like, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't like, think we want to go to the where we can have a town line, right, one right. there and one right at the corners, right, where you're entering the the blacktop. You don't have to mark all the roads that yeah. there. I think yeah, that's starting with two. I think starting with two is fine. That works, and then we can add it. All right, is there? So I'm going to make a motion. That we purchase two and install. Of, purchase and install two of the bike main use full lane signs. Yeah, the R the number is the R4-11. R4-11. In the MUTC. Two. two. In the MUTC, whatever. Manual on uniform traffic control. Device. Say the initials again. M-U-C-T, or M-U-T-C-D. M-U-T-C-D, Lisa. Denise made a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Mark okay. seconds. Is there any other discussion, comments, questions Just from the one more? And there's a question, question to the other one. Yeah. Uh, here you back to me again. I got a question. When did this ordinance pass? I mean, it's not an ordinance. Sounds like a recipe for the state law. It's a state it's law. Yes, state law. Federal. It's federal. Yeah. It's state. Yeah. It's federal. And we've had specific. This has been on the agenda for a bit. We've had specific requests from citizens asking us to look at these signs and consider installing them. I've seen. Three abreast on the county road, and they will not pull over. You know, on the dirt, dirt on the dirt road, West County Road. They don't have to. They, they don't have. They don't have to anymore. That's been a long time. Well, but it's inconsiderate. You're right. Uh, uh, the, the, the old there's an single ex, file. There, there's an expectation in the code also that bicyclists will allow 
because there's slower traffic that they will yeah. move to the side and allow other folks to go by. Okay. But at the end of the day, if they don't, you still, drivers can't be blowing their horn and giving them the middle, well, they will. Well, but I will. But they have that right. They have that right. And Bikers have the right. <laughs> but if you're going to do it, you can either blow your horn or use your finger. You can't do both. <laughs> that's a <important. laughs> Okay, Alfred, you uh, have That's why my co pilot, she gives the finger. Uh, same but color. the thing is, it sounds like I can't believe they passed that. That's it's, it's been age old. Yeah, it's been, it's a, been around for it's a while. Long. It's yeah. old. It's old. First I've heard. Anyway, uh, so Alfred. He might have stole my thunder a little bit, but, and you may have answered my question, but my concern is if there's an accident, we have these signs up, who's going to be liable? Because we're opening up our whole road to a bicycle. Isn't it the driver who has insurance? The driver, it's, the driver. it's like a horse. The drivers are always responsible to give right, right away to horses and bicycles and pedestrians. And if they hit any of them, mm -hmm. it's on them. It's on them. It just because and it isn't signed doesn't mean that absolves the driver of the responsibility mm -hmm. to that. Right. Drivers are expected to be. Right. Right. We are not. We are not creating. So, so yeah. 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 No, no, let's, they're supposed let's, to let me, safely gauge the situation. Let me get and let me let me be clear. I think we've said it, but we should articulate it clearly. We are not creating a law. We are not creating a truth. The truth, the the, the law, standard. the the standard, the ability already exists. What we're doing with science is educating. Um, and you know, no doubt we'll get questions, but we are educating that that is that is, per that is it is permitted, and hopefully what it does is further safety rather than erode safety. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, and the, by the way, the M U T C D is an acronym for Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, and among the rationale, the listed re rationales for this requirement in these signs was to encourage bicyclists, they encourage bicyclists to use the full lane to discourage unsafe within lane passing. It's, it's more, uh, they're used where you des to designate roads with lanes that are too narrow to be safely shared side by side by a bicycle and another vehicle to indicate that bicyclists may occupy the full lane to discourage unsafe within lane passing, encourage motorists to change lanes to pass bicyclists rather than pushing them off the road. Um, a number of people have been killed in Central Vermont in the last 20 years, when I know, because they've been that's happened to them. Uh, and it also is to warn motorists, motorists that bicycles may be using a full lane. Mm -hmm. Is there, do you have a... Uh, I, I would uh, just ask that the board consider maybe um, I think a front porch forum post, uh, you know, in conjunction with uh, an approval to install, just to help remind the public of the rights of bicyclists, um, right. would be would be a, a really... Yeah, maybe a nice, nice, nice way to communicate yes. that to the, to the community. Yeah. Um, well, and citizens can do that too. I yeah. mean, when we yeah. when we do when we take an action like this, it is it is great if people who are bicyclists, um, you know, say, hey, just a reminder, what whatever. Um, it's yeah, I'm glad we're doing this. If we've been these asking, signs are particularly used where there's not much of a shoulder. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's yeah. county road. So when there's yeah. a shoulder, the hope is that the cyclists will move right. But the county road's right. got a problem with the shoulders. We've talked yeah. About. So do we need to vote? Yes. yes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. okay. Voted unanimously. Okay. We've made our way through that list of items, and we are on. Uh, yeah. I do have a real quick question regarding speed. Madam yeah. Chair, yeah. did that sign get moved yet? At the bottom, from the bottom of the hill. No, yes. Why did I? It went down to the bottom of the hill. Or sort of up. I didn't quite understand. No, it was at the bottom of the hill. It's really, yeah, it's on the other side of the bottom. intersection. Yeah, it was supposed to get moved up. It was supposed to get moved up above the brow. And I noticed that okay. right. if I could talk, I could explain it. Okay, okay. go ahead. And you had a conversation with the total teller. Can you wait? Stop. Can I'm you guys wait? Hang on. 
Somebody please articulate clearly. You, you're talking about bottom hill, top of the hill. You're talking so about maple corn. We have Say, so so everybody knows what you're talking about. Speed control sign, electronic speed control sign, wake up call sign, whatever you want to call it. And it was originally placed at the bottom of the pavement stretch, right before you hit the dirt. Well, we at that point, we're we're getting the maple corn on the counter. And before at before that, that point, the concern is, and shared among the select board members is at that yeah, point, all right, so you get to the bottom of the hill and you've got 50 to the old 25. Um, it's too isn't late. the idea to get them to go 25 in the 25, so shouldn't that be at, at waking people up at the beginning when they hit the 25? And it should be above where they're going, yeah, above right. the brow, so, even they're going 55, so they have time to be So my understanding that, that in our last conversation, more in depth on this, was that was our understanding was that the sign was, despite having been installed, was going to be popped and it was going to be located the permanent post that is mounted on uphill. Right, right. uphill from up that. We, we discussed, I don't ever remember talking to Toby about this at all. I mean, I said to you, I mean, people should put this above the brow. What I did talk about at some point is that we would probably put a mount for the new signs down the hill towards the village and we could turn off the sign so we could actually measure. Speeds. Okay. So Coming Toby, down. Toby told me that you and him had spoke, and that the advantage of putting it down below was so that he could track the speed limits because yeah. this device has ability to track how many. Oh, oh, how oh many I see. Speed. We're going I got right. you. Right. He, so he thought it would be better down right at the end of Blacktop, where the dirt starts, and that would give you a better idea of how fast people are going. When they go past me at the corner store. Right. I forgot that the damage already so done. That's it's it's actually not damage. It's actually okay because it's we're getting the new signs are ordered. The other one just isn't. No, no, oh, okay. So another so sign is going in. Another sign is going in. Another one is going in uphill. And what we'll do, okay. what we'll do okay. my intent was to actually probably turn that sign off because we're going to use that for the traffic at times. So we can actually use that as a traffic counter. It will be there, but it will be measuring the speed of the vehicles. We'll see if it's effective right. before. In fact, what we need to do I'm is... Still, I'm still one question answered. Are we going to put a sign at the top of the hill? Yes. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And when do you what anticipate do? that to happen? As soon as they're delivered. We're waiting so, so much. And winter's coming. The yeah, guys can't do it in frost. So. But if there's a supply chain okay. issue... We have to wait. He said okay. it's going to be about two months. And but we don't have the pole mounts now? We don't have, we don't have a sign now. No, but no, we don't have to put it. Okay, guys, I want to stop us. Yeah, this has been we have fascinating. We have the anchors, the, the concrete anchors that was ordered. Are, are in. They arrived. Okay, okay, we're done. So they can be put we're in. Well, done. I want this clarified. We, we're way, we're running okay. way behind. This is. So, we heard the answers that they, we don't have the signs yet. Yeah, we can talk. No, but they have the the but signs we, get mounted on a foundation. Why don't the foundations we, need to go in before winter? Okay, let's put this on the. Let's put that now. Let's put this on the. So they can be done now. Okay. Let's put this on the agenda for next meeting, okay. and we can talk about it. We'll have this specifically, and you, you hear the concern. Alfred and Eric are hearing the concern. Let's right. let's carry on here. Okay, so we are on uh, Department of Public Works uh, discussion related to uh, a request to install a railing on the ramp to the Curtis Pond swim area. Who is going to speak to this item? Denise, uh, would you like yeah. to speak to this? Or do yeah, you we got a request. And as a safety issue at Curtis Pond, there's been a request to install um, a railing to make it easier to get in and out of Curtis Pond because there's a, a bank there. Um, and I don't have any idea how much well, something like Linda Sheets is coordinating. Yeah. Right? yeah. Is that what you're here for, Linda? Okay. Come, on, come on up and join come us. On, come on up. Linda, talk to me. And just by way of setting a scene, a scene here, there are quite a few people who would so. like to use Curtis Pond. There's some like, we're talking about the public swim area right. in Curtis yes. Pond. There right. are quite a few people, some of whom are elderly and otherwise, others of whom are not elderly but just disabled right. in one way or another who would like to be able to swim in the pond and find it's it difficult a, and a, a, rail, a, a railing on the steps, or even before the steps, would make it much easier for them to do that. And that's where this came from. Okay, thank you for letting me explain. 
So <laughs> do you want to add to, why don't we let Denise, or uh, Linda, yeah. Linda's here, and so, then you can So I have always been an avid um, swimmer at Curtis Pond until this year, and I had an injury um, on my knee, um, and, and I could not get into Curtis Pond. And so it was the first year that I didn't, so I went to number 10 Pond which was still hard to get into, yeah. but it was still a little bit easier. I tried once at the end of the season with David, and I just, it was just too scary. And then that's when I started talking to other people, who had, whether they had a child with a disability, or whether they were older folks like me, they just, it's hard to get in those steps. If you're talking, there's two different areas that the railing could go. Now this is the towns, and, and the citizens of the town, it's sometimes it's really important to go into the pond. And so if you're thinking of the steps, I actually have my contractor who's putting my own railing in my house now, so I will so I can go up my stone right. steps. He went and he looked at Curtis with me. We need an estimate from him. I didn't get it yet. Okay, but you're- But I also, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, he's not, doing this free of his- Right. But I mean, if he's the contractor and... Well, he's the contractor for my house. Right, but what I was going to finish saying is maybe he would be somebody that the town could hire to install the railings yeah, because he has experience, but we need a price, we need a quote on how much the railings cost, well, how much it's going to cost. Well, there it's going to be, Denise, because right. that's another, I mean, it could be on the stone steps, mm -hmm. and because what happens with the stone steps, you go down, but when you come up, you're just out there, and there's nothing to hang on to. And for kids, too, it would be helpful. Yeah, it sounds like it. And, and the other thing, if you do it on the grassy area, so if you go to the left, there's two entrances on the grassy area. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the one that goes um, directly into the pond that doesn't have the log. Um, and that you could also put a railing mm -hmm. from the land, and it goes right into the water. And then he got even a little bit more carried away saying, and then you could put a little wrap in the water so wheelchairs could go, but we know we don't want to do that. We just well, want to I have think, a railing. I think we have a lot of time to get an estimate. And, mm -hmm. and so this, this is, would be part of the, um, the next, monies from the federal government? Is that what it would be? Or, or not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. So I mean, we'd have to see how much, it, I think we have to see what the estimate is. What's it going to cost to buy them? Mm -hmm. and the design, and the installation, and then we can talk about where the money is going to come from. Do, but we need that you, information first. Linda, do you want to take the lead as a, a project creator in looking, work, you have somebody who you've already talked to um, who could help think about those things, and, and I, I, I'm just floating yeah, out I mean, a possibility. The other thing I want to mention that hasn't been said is if 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 he says this looks like a, you know I don't I'm making up numbers but if, if it's if it's oh if it's going to be over a five thousand oh, dollar no. job okay I don't know yeah well that, then, <coughs> then my ramp is, is twenty feet long mm -hmm. and it's going to be under two thousand yeah for well, the this, railing yeah, yeah railing right. right he's saying no no for the whole job Rail, railing and ramp. What Sharon, not the ramp, so I don't have a ramp. I what Sharon is getting at is we have a purchasing policy. Yes. And right. so if anything's over five thousand dollars, we have to go out to bid. Right. It's it's not going to be over. I mean, because we're just talking about an eight foot railing. That's mm -hmm. not, each place is it could be just be eight feet. Do you do you want to be a project lead and come back well, to I mean, us I'm in, in very, February? In February. I'm not very savvy. I'm a good advocate, but I'm not very savvy. Oh, no. No. Do you so, want to? But I could try with this contractor. Right. And then, but if I'm having problems, I may come back to session. Yeah. He can hand draw a sketch. What his yeah. plan is is at the end of the railing is going to terminate in the water, so you can yeah, grab I, it. You know that kind of stuff. Is I can help problem. you. And there, and you said you talked to other people, which means that there's other. You yeah, know, like Katie is one who wants this. Um, right. Um, so some the, somebody. I have a whole list of people. Right. So somebody. So if someone, if you know, Linda had a great idea, and. And so folks say, that's a great idea. Um, I'm going to, here's my thought, is I'm going to pencil this as a February, February follow-up conversation. Yeah, so maybe we can get it 
ready for spring. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. next season. So, and Linda, I'm going to put your name on it unless um, you come back and say, I advocated and recruited somebody else who is going to take a lead, get work with a contractor, help us come oh, up with the design. I need to help because this contractor, right? I can be yeah. there. Point. And be oh, there. Yeah, I have a company easy. that he went to. I mean, mm -hmm. it has to be powdered. It's right? not. Which I, I barely know what that means. Yeah, I just powder coated. Yeah. 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 Right. So things and that is the light. It's a paint that they melt in the So the Just to make it so it's not slippery. Yeah. Right. So where this stands is, what we will need is a sketch, a rough sketch. A formal proposal. Plus a, pr a price. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we can take it up. Denise will work with you. And if you have trouble like getting it, Denise can help you. And then we'll bring this before us. And In the I think you're winter. hearing a lot of support for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Project well, description, sketch, price. Three, that's it. Yep, that's a proposal. Yeah. Okay. Then it's something we can approve, and then we'll know is it something we can approve, and there's somebody position that we could hire to do it, or as it turns out, is it something we that have we to have find to someone else to do the job? At least it, there's an estimate what to work with. Right. 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 And then he may not want to be. He's from Hyde Park, so he may not want to. Right. And then we can always put it. And then if we have we to, we put other it out to bid. If he says no, what's your if we can put it, if if it crosses the threshold under our purchasing policy, then we'll know that we, you know, we have to put it out bid for bid. So, great, great idea. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Linda. Yeah. yeah Thank you. Uh, Jordan, you have a. a Just curious whether or not there's any obligation by the town to for a permitting, like state permitting for something like that. That could constitute a likely development activity. Good point. Could be. Could be. Could be. But it's still, yeah. I mean, it's still a good idea. Yeah. Just, yep. We can make a note in the minutes to make sure that it complies with state permitting. You got that? Yeah, thanks, Lisa. Uh, okay, so we had a work plan item here, and I think that was just generally to talk to Eric. Yeah. Anything you want to? Eric, do you want to add anything? Add anything to At work this plan? Point, DPW work plan? Not right now. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and then also we met at. We just need to schedule a meeting. And schedule a meeting with the road crew. We just want to schedule a meeting with the road crew um, at some point. And right. that's well, a and that, because we're going through a transition. That's right. right. And that's, right. A, next, that's next, a follow up. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Well, I think we should wait and get a recommendation from Eric as to when. Right. Yeah. yeah. So just to say, we'll be scheduling a meeting with the road yeah, crew. Just to, put it, just to put it out there that yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, to show support in the time of transition. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So then, uh, I raised this. Uh, you want me to talk at all about? We already oh, we already talked about town plans. Right. right. Yeah. That's done. Yeah. Right. And then we're so we're on to the council discussion. So, um, amidst all of the important things going on in town, we uh, I raised this briefly at our last meeting. But what we learned when our our council position was open last time is that there are different levels of constable-ness, constabulatory authorities. authorities. Yeah, there's level one, two, and three, right? Right, and so, so we've, we've actually had, we learned, um, a level two constabulatory authority, I believe. So Wilson had been formally trained at the Vermont Police Academy, had certain authorities that um, are not necessary are not required for him to have at pursuant to that training. Also, certain um, obligations that flow from that level two training, and uh, and so as a, as a result of all of the learning that we did when we were onboarding our previous constable, um, we realized that we want to actually be thoughtful and asking ourselves: Do we want a level one? Or level two. Level three is like well beyond anything that any. State cop. Yeah, it's a state yeah. cop. Um, so the question for us really is a level two or a level three. And level two is the one that requires a, a lot of, you know, kind of the process that we worked our way, mostly worked our way through to right. ensure that our console has um, 
uh, police academy training and authorization um, from us to su support to some extent. But we also learned that a, a level one is entirely, um, is all that's required right. under state law. And that would be an official who does, a constable who does not go through the Vermont Police Academy training and instead is authorized for specific, much more narrowly defined actions as scoped by the select board. And I think if I recall the statutory three around those things are things like um, enforcing our animal control ordinance, um, um, supporting that, right. and, and removing people, disorderly people disorderly from Disorderly conduct meetings. in town meetings or select board or other meetings. Right, right. And we had a lot of feedback at that meeting we had in July. Was it July? Mm -hmm. We had a lot of feedback, so that got us to thinking more about what do, what do we really want. And what I learned and didn't know was that there are these different levels, and you don't have to have somebody who is trained to carry a gun and those kinds of things. So we want to be really thoughtful about what level we want our constable to be. I think the townspeople are used to it being a more laid back, laid back you know, yeah, you know, I'll go check out the house with the health officer like Wilson did. But we also had a discussion. Yeah, to have, you know, the health officer sometimes needs the constable to go. The constable can serve papers if asked to by the sheriff or the court. The level one. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I think, what the town has been used to. So that's what we need to be thoughtful about. We so, had, can I could just make sure that I, Denise, I think, I think what you're saying is, so we just test that we're on the same page, that um, our Wilson, and I say Wilson, not our previous, Travis was our most previous, um, but Wilson was actually trained as a level two mm -hmm. at a point when that was fairly new. That option was a new one, is also right. one of the things we learned. But um, as a day-to-day -day matter, um, the activity that he was undertaking was much more in the level he was, one. Right, he didn't. Right, he, he didn't, didn't step into level two. No, he didn't step. He didn't do level two stuff duties. Yeah, but we were surprised. In fact, when we learned. Right, we were surprised when we found out that Wilson, in fact, did, what, was trained for right. level two. Yeah. Right. Okay, so John, you so, were going well, to build I, on this or ask I, know, I think a very brief history is in order here. Sure. The legislature revisited this area of law because previous to the changes, In the constable had all the authorities of a sheriff. They were the town sheriff. They, and I, I noticed because I used to be one in Woodbury, if someone called up and there's a domestic issue, the way the statute read them, uh, and in Woodbury at the time they were elected, I don't know if they are any longer, um, by the time they were elected, if you were elected constable, you're sworn in, you were obligated to provide all the services and meet all the expectations in statute. For instance, if there's a domestic abuse situation, you get a call like I did, um, there's an expectation you're going to go there. And if you do not, just like if a state cop or a sheriff doesn't go, and something happens, God forbid, serious, there's liability that actually goes to the individual and not necessarily to the town. So I resigned my constable position because of that very issue. Of there was a domestic, and the state trooper who was called this <coughs> did not show up. And this guy, two weeks later, there was a fire at this trailer, and he was hauling cases of guns and ammunition out, and three months later, he shot an old lady. So, scared the heck out of me, and I reviewed the law, and I talked to the town attorney at the time, said, yeah, you're reading the law right, you're absolutely personally liable, and I talked to the select board at the time, Diana Peducey, Larry Rossi, and I forget who else, Jim Gahagan, and I said, am I covered? Are you guys going to insure me? They're like, whoa, we didn't expect that. I resigned right there. So. I think with that in mind, the state police did not show up because their protocol was, for domestics I learned, uh, are, the most, are the most dangerous 
situation a, a police officer finds himself in, and protocol for the state troopers at that time and likely still is if there's a domestic uh, call, they do not show up unless there's two officers that can respond. They didn't have two officers to respond, so I was left there. I got the woman out of there. But um, so anyway, they then changed the law so that no longer is a constable that's elected or appointed obligated to meet those higher levels. They tiered them, and in fact, um, the level one is what you enter into it by default, and it's pretty minimal. Yeah, it's minimal. Uh, and I, I, do not, I do not know what the citizen, I'm, I'm gonna push back a little bit, Denise, on your sense of what the folks here are used to. I don't think they know. I think when a constable's call, they get all sorts of calls, and people don't know who to call. Um, we had a guy running around naked, and that's yeah, one thing, but time. harassing people, and and there was a lot of back and forth, and we had people here pretty upset and yelling at us as select board members, remember? I remember. And I, remember um, that one. I believe Wilson was involved as a level two, and there was a lot of level two stuff that he did. Maybe I don't remember that. Um, so whether it was before the law changed, I think it was post the law change, and he was a level two, or maybe he went level two after that, I don't know, but I know he was involved with this character. So, um, I just want to say, I don't necessarily agree with the contention um, that there's an expectation that the constable is just going to chase dogs and... Well, honestly, I, don't, I didn't mean to give that... But uh, I, I don't know what the sense is, and I think maybe we have a public, a number of public meetings and forums and figure out what, what the folks want. Um, we have a problem with staffing everything, mm -hmm. not only road crew, uh, the sheriff can't get people. And so we are seeing less and less control. service from the sheriff's department. You know, uh, we we could ask for a hundred hours a week. They limit. They only have a certain number of people, and they allocate the hours across the entire county. Right. So we get this little tiny. They'll show up. I don't know what it is. Four days a year, and that's our that's our share. I don't know. It doesn't matter how much money. We I don't have. know if it's four days a year. I, I don't know. Whatever it is. I just want to make sure that we're not. That on the I, that's what I said. I said I don't know what it is, yep. but we get our allocation. That's all. It doesn't have to do with how much so funding. John, we have. are you? So. <clears throat> so, do I understand that we have to decide at some point what level what level we want? Right. And John right. saying we should make that up. Uh, there should be public discussion. We should have, we should have a, a meeting and get public input. Yeah. We got some yeah. at that other meeting, but there might be more. Right. And it wasn't and, a warned item. And it wasn't. Are you? Well, we get, I think we invite Wilson and ask him why he thought right. I need for a level two. Maybe he was just well. I'm seeing a reduction in my uh, roles and responsibilities. So in order to maintain what I. I'm accustomed to. Yeah. You might have done that. Okay. So uh, and we could probably get we, some, we could probably get somebody from the LCT to come and talk about yeah, the roles and responsibility of yeah. the different levels of the constable. What? Yeah. Because there is a there is a quite an insurance issue. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. This <laughs> I there is okay. an insurance issue if you go to a certain level. Right. So, so we just, we this is to, something that we should, I mean, John's clearly got opinions on this. This is other people might. Can I, I, so, I actually have a suggestion. Yeah, what's your suggestion? Um, right now we have, we have no constable. Right. And we haven't advertised or recruited because we needed to have this conversation. Um, my suggestion is that we decide, not tonight, but that it's <coughs> relative you know, well, rel relative expedience, we decide on a level one for now, so that at least we can recruit and and be looking for somebody to be some kind of constable, and that would give us space to say, also acknowledge, we need to have a larger conversation about whether we want to go to level two, but level two encompasses level one, so I don't see a harm in starting with a level one so that we have something and we're and we're not in a holding pattern. Right, the only problem I see with that is you might get somebody who agrees to be level one, we get them all in, and then we the board decides to do something different, 
and that person doesn't want that responsibility. Sure, but if they, but if we decide on a level two at the front, they're not going to apply for it right. anyway. So what if we were to follow your idea? What if we were to agree tonight? No, we have to wait. Okay, Warren, what if we were to agree that we're going to advertise for a level one, and we could put in the ad that people who are in, you know, have higher qualifications are welcome to submit? But, well, but higher qualifications is, is... So we don't eliminate, I mean, I, I catch your idea, you don't want right. to eliminate. Right, but I don't know that if we, if, if, sure, you can submit, but if you are a level two person, yeah. and we have authorized only a level one, though that was some of the issue we had. I guess your, your, your authority would be limited to level one, however, you would be a person who, if the town decides you want a, a level two, you could step into level two. So I, I'm just thinking in today's world, where it's so hard to get people, we should just advertise. We should be advertising for yeah. something, but we want to. We yeah. but we want to be clear where yeah. we are right now. So I mean, and that's the kind of thing we could do in an interview. Well, right, but when we advertise, we want to say we're advertising. So we're not going to decide one. tonight. So why doesn't no. everybody think about it? Okay. And we'll keep it on the agenda for next time and take action. Right. Okay. Well, we have to know what we're going to take action on level one. If we're if we're going to take action on a level one. Do you want to say take action on the what level of constable? Authorize the. Uh, we can just say authorize. Uh, Advertising for a level one constable. constable. Uh, if we or really want to have a town discussion about it, you can just say on the yeah. agenda. You can just say authorizing okay. yeah. uh, uh, for a constable. It doesn't even have level. to say what level, because yeah, right. that can be part of the discussion, especially if people show up. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, what's today? Today is the twenty sixth. So we want to maybe. I don't know if we're going to have time to put it on on the seventeenth. We got a lot of stuff. Um, well, if we wanted to authorize a level one, having had this discussion, we could simply put it on a consent agenda. We could. I think that the discussion is probably not done. Okay. Because um, I think we should have, and that's what I kept asking before, what are the qual what do you have to have to be one, two, or three? And I could never get, and maybe we have it now, but that was what I was constantly after is what is that? What does it mean if you're level one? What does it mean if you're level two? And it would be good to have that into the record of exactly what that means. Beyond what's in the statute? Or in the VLCT guidance? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we need to revisit. So revisit the VLCT guidance on that. Right, on the different levels. Okay, we can, we can do that. I would be surprised if well, I, I guess I'll reserve my judgment. Maybe people will show up and say, what are you thinking? We need a level two. Maybe, we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. okay. And Denise, do you have a personal update? Personal, personal update, update for us. Um, no. Okay. Um, okay, so round, right, round robin, anything that we haven't talked about that people wanted to talk about? I just want to mention, and I'm speaking now as a member of the Curtis Pond Association, having recused myself, I just want to say sometime in the not terribly distant future, we will be, Denise as, a, as our, as the, as the appointed, Denise and John as the appointed people, liaison, liaison and the CPA will be asking the board to agenda this an item for an update. Right. That's all. Just to, it's, okay. it's there. Do you feel like it's a ten? It, well, ten seventeen. I would say ten twenty. Yeah, not ten seven. Not ten seventeen. It's no, moving too full. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So we do have a very Long. full agenda for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we may not have the background on the Cal's Road and Bridge standards done, so that may end up coming I may on. not. I'm going to work really hard to get something done, oh, or at least look, get a draft. I already had constable do some level of statutory authority as an action item for next time. Um, we wanted to talk about use of ARPA funds for traffic calming road design study. Is that right. going to be ripe for next meeting? I'll get down and visit with that other stuff again. Okay, so I'm going to put that off to the 24th. 
Um, and a traffic control ordinance update, I'm guessing, is also not going to be ready for next time. Probably not. Um, I would think that we would be ready with the town hall. Um, yeah, we'll be ready. We'll yes. be ready for that, Mark and I. Will be and ready I for can that. look at the committee appointments to see if there are any. And the, okay. So the Tyler Clark, we had that one, and we had the. And then we're going to have Carmichael. Yeah, maybe on the 17th. Do we, Denise, if we have minor little changes to the town hall use policy, do we need to? What do we do with those? Take them back to that committee. We need to take it back to that committee, but I think they'll be minor enough so that they'll just. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. That's it. All right. I think we are ready to adjourn. Is there a motion? So moved. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you for attending, everybody. Yes, thank you.